Hey, welcome to the Master Tech Lou channel. I am Lou, and today I'm reviewing the Foxwell NT710. This is a all system scanner with bi direction capabilities for BMW. I love this thing. If you watch any of my other videos, you'll see that I'm a Mercedes Benz tech by trade. So I only got to use this on a BMW for the duration of the video. However, I'm very impressed with what this thing can do, and I would feel very confident in diagnosing a, a BMW for the first time with having something like this. Um, at the end of my videos, I always tell you that I'm not making money off these products, which I'm not, and I don't want to try to sell you on anything. I do like this one, though. I really do. Um, there hasn't been a scanner I disliked at the moment. However, if I was going to work on BMWs or if I was a BMW tech, I would believe that you would be blown away by what this thing can do up to the you know fact that you can't really program keys or do programming, but uh, being able to control everything in the car, this thing has good capabilities with it. You're going to like it. So uh, let's check it out. As usual, let's check out the unboxing. It comes in a nice blow molded case. It's got some extra swag to it. So we're going to go ahead and open this thing up. Okay, there's the scanner. I already had this all open and plugged in and charged up, so that's how it looks coming out of the box. It's got the uh, OBD2 cable. It has a Type-C charger. Then, of course, we got the handy-dandy user's manual. All right, a little bit of quick start guide. So you're going to like this thing. Let's go check it out in the car. All right, so we got it plugged into a 2018 BMW X5. We're going to go ahead and hit the diagnostic and I'll show you all the functions of what we can do here, right? So there's a little tab, you can minimize the side. I do have the clicker on just because, so it might get a little bit annoying, but uh, you can plug it into any car and do basic OBD2, or you can just do BMW, Brazilian BMW, Mini and Rolls Royce. Uh, and I showed you before, if you go to the shop, you can add other models here. I think I might uh, have them add me a Mercedes one. If not, see if they'll hook me up with all of these. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go back here and it's kind of nice. It's like a uh, Amazon style, um, Kindle style, uh, Kindle Fire or Google style. Like, I don't know, I'm a iPhone guy. So this kind of a tablet style is like the Amazon Kindle Fires and stuff. So uh, we're gonna go to diagnostic. And let's try VIN, automatic read. I said automatic, did I click it wrong? Oh, there we go, yeah, clicked it wrong, my bad. All right, automatic, it pulls it up here. We're gonna go yes. Kind of freaked me out, it turned the ignition off and back on. I'm not sure if that's a normal BMW thing. I'm a Mercedes tech by trade. So I don't know what I'm looking at in this scanner, which would probably be perfect for a review because if you've never used this thing, you probably don't know what you're looking for either, right? So this might be good for both of us, right? Now I did mess with this for about an hour before I started the review, so I don't sound like a total idiot. But first we'll go, we'll look at the top here. So the top, you can go home, it'll exit, right? Uh, settings, you can go quick to settings if you want to change some stuff while you're in there. Okay, print, you can print. Um, I already had a report done, so I can send it to my printer. Uh, screenshot, it'll show photos or feedback. You can click that, it'll send feedback to, to Foxwell. <clears throat> so first we'll start at the bottom. We'll go special functions. This is a bi-directional scanner, which is awesome. It can do all of these things provided that your car can let it do it. Now, what these special functions are is when you install something new, depending on what it is, if it has, if, uh, if it has automatic movement functions and it has to know position, you have to initialize it, which means you put it in the car, you click initialization, and it allows you to learn the sensor or the or the the switch or the function of it, right? So uh, most times we got to initialize seat motors so it knows the full stop. So when you do automatic memory, uh, the windows, the sunroof, steering angle sensor, uh, certain um, sensors for the traction system, you have to initialize cameras, uh, sunroof motor, tailgate motor, you got to initialize because it has to know the full up and down, right? So 
this is awesome that you can do all of this stuff in here. All right, now it does say keys, but it doesn't allow you to program keys. It just gives you an option to change some data of a key or block or enable a key. Like say if you lost the key, you can block one. So that way your car can't get stolen. But so all of these things like steering angle sensor, um, we, would, we would initialize it. So it would learn the movement of it, right? So let's see if it'll do it right now. Okay, so it's moving the steering wheel on its own. It's gonna check the complete up, down, and out. I'm not doing anything, it's doing it on its own. That's what we call initialization. It's learning the position of itself. It's coming at us, I don't know if you can tell. Man, I think comes out far. Look how far the steering column comes up, Jesus. My friend's gonna be mad that I lost her position of her steering wheel. <laughs> All right. Now, the problem that I have with when you start to do these things is you can't back out of it. Once you enter it, you are stuck going through the process. So be careful. The only thing you can do, I think, would be unplug the scanner, but I'm not sure if that would damage anything or lock the module up into that mode. You might have to reset it. So. So again, special functions are you get to relearn or initialize things and you can reset the oil service, the parking brake, uh, you can move so you can do brakes, you can relearn your battery, brake bleeding, you can read what I'm doing here, you know, all this stuff. Uh, level sensors for the suspension, AC brake in, transmission adaptation, adaptation, which is good. If you got a trans shifting issue, you can reset it and relearn it. So that's, that's really neat. I, I like these. I like these uh, bi-directional small Foxwell ones, man. They're 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 really good. All right, so let me go back here. Service. There's certain things you can do. So let's see. Uh, I think it brings you right to like a a uh, a resetting of items right so what i mean is like uh if you get into a crash the engine won't start but if you go here you can reset the starter lock right or um if you change a starter you know it'll know and you can reset it in there so it's almost like a special function but again i'm not too versed in bmw so let's see what it would do here yeah okay startup workshop mode betting and procedure so it's almost like when you put a module in it'll let you relearn or, or another set of initializations for those parts. All right. Yeah, so you're kind of getting it set up here. So now let's go to diagnosis. And if you go control modules, you can pick which module you want directly. Or if you go quick scan, it's gonna look for all the control modules. I'll just do this in real time so you guys can see how long it takes. Aftermarket ones are generally way faster than the factory ones um, because they're just searching for everything and anything where the factory ones start to use the VIN and determine what modules it should have. And then they start to look for those modules from there. Plus they give you some information that sometimes these don't. Um, so they do take a considerable amount of time. I like having these small guys in the shop. Uh, well, it doesn't have to say small, but I like having these aftermarket ones in a shop because they're faster and quicker than the factory ones. So it's going through all the control modules. I think this one has 20 or so. And I should have charged this. The battery's kind of weak. It does charge through the port, but you're also using it too, so... You don't have to have it plugged in to turn on. It's got a power button, which I'm sure I went through already. Charger here, data transfer cable here to plug it into your computer to update software if you want, or you can just do it through Wi-Fi.
and we're at 100 percent up there you go 20 was it 26 miles let's see how many it scanned 26 total control modules and when there is a fault it does give you a drop down so you can see all the faults that are in there i do like this layout this is almost autel style and not that i want to compare this to autel but that's what people tend to do um i do like autel as well however the pricing sometimes doesn't seem worth it compared to what you can get a few aftermarket ones that'll cover everything so while you're in here you can save the report and you can save and email it and it shows you the whole report it's very nice and thorough so you can send it to your customer or just save it for yourself all right and then report it shows you the report <clears throat> if you just wanted to see it all right and then erase we can erase all the codes at once but uh, let's see if we went to the body domain controller. So when you get into the modules, you're going to see all the same options as long as they're available to do it. So if the module doesn't perform anything, you're not going to have an active test. Um, you will get ECU information in almost any car you plug into. You'll get read codes, clear codes, and then view to live data. Activate test is the bonus to these things if they can activate stuff, which is called bi-direction. Um, if you have another one, you would have uh, um, coding and then adaptation or programming or software update, right? Where you can have different names. I'm not sure what BMW calls it, but you, you know, most uh, factory scanners would have six or seven options because you're missing programming and coding um, and adaptation center, which active test sometimes can be an adaptation, right? But let's see here if we go to wipe and wash system windscreen wiper stage one all right so i'm going to activate it okay ready there you go so i activate it with a scanner all right so that's awesome for bi-direction control because let's say you have a wiper motor that's not working okay the first thing you want to do is how do you know the switch is working so you're going to want to go to the module that reads the wiper switch and see if it can see the activation to the wiper switch and if it can and the motor's still not working then you want to see if you can activate it. If you can't activate it, then you're either missing power or the motor is bad. So then you would check for power and ground at the motor while you're activating it, right? So that's that's why uh, bi-direction is awesome to have, all right? And you can activate all the things to do with the wipers. We just did the steering column, so we can activate this, right? And then initializing, which you guys just saw me do central locking we can unlock the stuff so it's neat we can we can do everything here that the control module can do right so which, which is great you're not limited this is uh this is very thorough for what it is man it's 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 cool i like this thing so and then you can see there's also the reset starter lock so if you didn't want to go through all the modules to do this stuff what you would do is go straight to those service functions and go straight to the item that you know you wanted to do so the best thing I say is when you get these things and plug them in, just fumble around and see what you can do. However, be careful with the initializations because once you get in there, I haven't seen no way to get out. It just gives you a yes. There's no no. So you have to stop what you're doing so that way you don't get into an initialization mode that you don't know how to get out of. That's the tricky part. So I will say that these things or this Foxwell scanner is really thorough. I really like this thing. All right, so let's just select all these. All right, it gives you the option for just reading the words or if you want to graph the stuff. Graphing is nice um, certain times. Not all the time, sometimes it's uh, it can be annoying. So what is this here? Maybe I should not have picked all of them. So let's deselect all, let's just do gear selector switch position all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the shifter and there we go okay so i'm reading the live data that's what i'm reading so every time i use this it's showing you the live data that's what you want to see when you're trying to diagnose stuff you got to see what the thing is seeing I mean, I can keep going with this, but nothing's going to be different here. So let's see what we can do in here. Functional display. Functional display is activated. What is that for? Oh, 
There we go. Let me do it again. Okay, activate. So it's showing you all the lights. So maybe if you had a light that wasn't working, you can test it to see if it's working. All right. So I don't know how much more you guys would want to see of this thing because it's doing everything you would need it to do. Well, I like this thing, the Foxwell NT714, 710, 714. <clears throat> the, uh, yeah, NT710, it's uh, it's very thorough for what it is. Um, the option to get other cars in there too is great. Um, I wonder if there's a brand or, or a model out there that would just have it all inclusive. I'm sure you can buy some already preloaded. Uh, this one's certainly for the BMW, but uh, running through all the functions, man, I, uh, I like this thing. Um, I would, I never try to sell you anything because they don't make money off these things. They send me the products for free and I do the reviews on them and you know, that's it. You know, they just send it to me before I do the review. Um, there's no, there's no, I'll send you a link or there'll be a link in the description with a discount code for the item, but I don't make money off that stuff. Right. That's just for them. That's like the change off. They give me the product that put their stuff out there, but, uh, I'll never try to sell you anything because it's up to you to determine what you like and what is going to benefit you. But I will say I would strongly recommend this one because the fact that it's so thorough, I don't really care that you can't program stuff with it. The only people that need to program things are shops, but, um, it's, you're going to have to spend big money to find something that's going to program control modules and make sure that you're doing enough of that kind of work to account for the money you're going to spend for that unit. Right? So to me, I'm fine with doing all the work up to the programming and then having like a mobile mechanic come out or send it to the dealer, right? At least you did the work to determine that the failure, right? Needs programmed or a module needs changed. So it's not necessarily a deal breaker if you can't do that kind of thing, but I love the all system scanners that can read all the systems. They can read the live data and they can do, ad I'm sorry, adaptations or by direction control, which this one can do with the initializations and stuff. It is so easy to diagnose things that way when it's this thorough. When you have the ones that only read live data, it helps you, but you're still missing the point or, or the part where you can activate things to see if they actually work or to check the signals to the stuff. Because sometimes if you're using a switch, sure, the live data says it's working and the module says it's on, but if you get no signal on the wire, you don't know if the module is sending it or if the wire is bad or there's an issue with the connection, right? So you have to activate it to know that you're making it happen. And then you can test it to see if it's actually getting signaled. Then you know that a module has failed or whatnot. So it's uh, it's very helpful to have bi-direction and relearnings of things because when you're replacing parts, you got to do the initialization or the module will have the old value stored in it and it's not going to work right when you put the new, the new part in, you know? So, uh, um, I hope you like this video. Uh, check out my other review, review videos. I review quite a bit of different scanners and scan tools and products. Um, check out my other how-to videos. Even if, it's not, even if it's not something for your car, there's takeaways. I give them all, all my videos because I ramble a lot. So I try to like a thought will come into my head about something that I think you should know. And I, I blurt it out. So every video has little nuggets in there that'll help you in your day-to-day -day stuff. But uh, uh, hit the subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, if you like it, hit a like, you know, post it to your favorite forum to let them know, you know, about these videos or, or uh, the scanner or whatnot. Um, but this is the uh, Master Tech Lou channel. I am Lou. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.